was, according to you, the founding father, in brackets, earliest pioneer for the jazz saxophone. I never would have guessed that I should do this, but I guess I have to clarify that Kenny G was kind of a, just a fun trolling option and not a real one. Probably half of you were trolling me, which is fair enough. And the other half thought the question was like, who played with the most angle on a saxophone in history? Anyways, if we look through the lens of improvisation as the main factor in jazz, which is of course fair enough, it is probably one of the most important factors. We see this pioneer by Lester Young, Coleman Hawkins, Sidney Bichet on the saxophone. But when we dig into the inspirations of the early jazz saxophonists themselves, you'll find a hidden name in there mentioned by a lot of the household jazz saxophonist names like Lester Young, Paul Desmond, Benny Carter, just to name a few. Yeah, you've guessed that by now, that's in the title. Frankie Trumbauer. So what makes Frankie Trumbauer so special? Lester Young was actually very specific about this. In an interview, he mentioned that the tune Singing the Blues with Trumbauer's C melody saxophone on it inspired him for this lyrical and soft sound. This tune where Trumbauer plays with Big Spider, Becca and Jimmy Dorsey came out in 1927, which makes Lester Young 18 years old at that time. He provides a soft elegance in his sound, that soft, loose, airy jazz saxophone sound as we know it. It's really not hard to see the influence on the sounds of a Benny Carter or Desmond either. The C melody saxophone falls right into the middle of the tenor and the alto saxophone, although I think it sounds a little bit more familiar in the direction of the alto. But there is way more to Trumbauer's influence and playing on the next generations of jazz saxophonists to come. While he didn't improvise these, he composed some lines that will feel very familiar to today's jazz saxophonists. Let's look at parts of his self-composed tune Trombology from the exact same session as Singing the Blues, which we heard earlier. This is together with Big Spider Becca, another pioneer on his instrument, of course. Although he played C melody saxophone, we will take a look at the E flat transposition sheet music as this keeps us nicely in C major and we will compare it to other alto saxophonists. Consider this, yes, composed line. <laughs> Neglect the minor chords for a moment and let's think of this line that embodies a G7 resolving into a C chord on the next bar. A 5-1 motion that is. The first thing you'll notice is the chromatic passing tone between G and F. The root and the flat 7 of the G7. This would be in today's jazz theory seen as within the context of a dominant bebop scale. Next we see a diatonic approach note to B, which is the third of our G7, followed by a diatonic approach note from above to R5 of the chord. This feels pretty familiar to bebop standards, approach notes either chromatically or diatonically. A little bit later in the tune when he concludes his first melody line and we have again a 5-1 progression G7 into C, we see a similar use of the dominant bebop scale avant la lettre. They're all chord tones on the downbeat with approach notes serving as the glue in between. Okay, besides his ridiculous virtuosic showcase of the use of double tonguing on saxophone here, that G7 bar shows us again a very interesting line. 
Oh yes, and for those of you who are really interested in that crazy double-tonguing part of Trumbauer, it's basically been done with uh, double-tonguing, like brass uh, instruments usually do, uh, by saying tuku, 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 tuku. You keep the, the airflow uh, very soft. That's the hard part because you're breaking it up because of the T and the K going up in your mouth. But uh, there's also a very, very cool video that shows you the inside of a mouth on when it's done. Uh, I'll drop the link to that also somewhere here below. And uh, that's a brass instrument, but you'll see exactly what should happen inside to get this double tonguing effect. And now my arm is sore from keeping this camera. Okay, back to the line on the G7. Here Trumbauer starts on the third of the chord with that B, proceeds to use a chromatic passing tone between G and A, goes to the flat seven of the chord, the F, followed by an E, an approach note to B again from below, and a approach note to D from above. If this kinda does ring a bell, let me help you. <laughs> As you can see, the main ID is pretty much the same here. The line starts on a B, followed by a chromatic passing tone between G and A, going to F. Parker then repeats that exact same ID a octave lower, connecting it first more stepwise between that E and the B on B3 and 4 on that D minor 7. The ID is basically the same, but Bird extended it way more. <laughs> The next one might seem a bit far-fetched to some of you, but do you remember the first lick? Here, let me help you. Now listen to Phil Woods playing this classic trademark bebop lick. I think the key ingredients to this lick can be found in Trumbauer's playing. Do I think Phil Woods really got it straight from Trumbauer? Probably not, but Trumbauer was part of the early movement that got a certain idiomatic musical language started. Whoever is your main inspiration, go and see what their inspiration was. Then even go further and see what those masters their inspiration was. For example, if you like Charlie Parker, then you really need to check out at some point Lester Young and Hawkins if you want to understand him. And if you want to understand Lester Young, like we've talked about in this video, then you probably want to look into Trumbauer's playing. You'll see way more easy the line in the developments, and you'll understand way better the roots of every aspect of the jazz saxophone and improvisation. There is almost always a continuation of something that was already happening at the time, with some innovation and new combinations. Seldom something comes out of nothing. So anyways, you tell me, are there any other unsung heroes, some hidden gems, and can be any instrument at all in any genre? I really want to know. If you know somebody, drop them in the comments. And otherwise, let me know what you think of this video. Was this helpful? Was this interesting? Maybe not, uh, but I thought it was really interesting. I'm Jorge Reinigs from Sharp 11 Music and hopefully see you next time. Oh yes, and I completely forgot I'm really bad at this part, but if you're interested, we have actually some study material and me and Timothy as well breaking down some licks to the core and help you with how that you can make that creatively your own. So we have some books like Licks Unraveled that's about a lot of very cool uh, selected licks and I unpack them and show you how you can use it more conceptually. You can find that in a link that I put somewhere here in the video or down. See you next time.